Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us at this session. My name is Yang Yu, and I'm currently working in the Android team at Line Fukuoka. Today, with my colleague Johnny Huang, who's from the iOS team at Line Fukuoka, we are here to talk about some interesting technical challenges we encountered when we uh, implemented the new sticker keyboard on Android and iOS. So we have a few sections in this talk. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the recently released keyboard a little bit because it's part of our story today. Then I'd like to share with you how we tackled the rendering performance problem on Android platform. Lastly, my colleague Johnny will present how he implemented the fancy animations on iOS site. Okay, let's start off with the new sticker keyboard, which has been released a few months ago. In this release, the keyboard on chat room has been improved a lot, and many new features have been added to make chatting with friends more fun. Uh, first, we added a reminder section at the bottom of the sticker tab to remind users of the expiration date of the sticker. When the sticker is, is, is expired, it will be automatically removed from the keyboard. Also, there's a new recommendation section to help users easily find more products from the same author. Uh, if you tried message stickers before, now we make using message stickers even easier. The new message sticker tab enables users to uh, quickly and easily send the sticker with any messages. Finally, we introduced a totally new tab, which displays a list of different categories of stickers, such as uh, thanks, happy and love. This way, users can quickly and easily find the particular sticker that can express his or her current feeling. OK, let, I, now I want to talk to you guys about the technical challenge on the Android side while implementing the new stick keyboard. Uh, as an Android engineer of the Line for Goka team, one of my responsibilities was developing the new recommendation section displayed at the bottom of the stick or emoji tab. Well, initially, because of time constraints, we tried to avoid too much unnecessary refactoring of the existing keyboard. Uh, the existing sticker or emoji grade view has been implemented by a recycler view. So we decided to implement the new recommendation section by another recycler view then wrap it along with the existing recycler view in the nested scroll view, uh, which looks like something like this. However, by doing this, I noticed the emoji keyboard looks laggy while scrolling up and down. As you can see in this video, when swapping left or right to navigate between tabs with a horizontal finger gesture, the keyboard becomes quite laggy. After checking the logs, I found that when showing the emoji tab, all the emojis were rendered immediately. If you've been doing Android development for a while, you should know a recycler view renders as many views as are needed to display the on-screen portion of the dynamic content. While the user scrolls through the list, the recycler views takes the uh, off-screen views and refines them to the data, which is scrolling onto the screen. Apparently, the behavior shown in the video doesn't comply with the mechanism of recycler view. My initial guess was there might be something wrong with the rendering process of our recycler view. So in order to find out the root cause, I decided to add a closer look at how the uh, net recycler, nested recycler view is rendered. All right, let's take a step back and recall how the uh, Android framework draws views on the screen. Basically, drawing starts by a pre-order traversal of the layout tree to measure and draw each view. Each view group is responsible for requesting each of its children to be drawn, and each child view is responsible for drawing itself. Now, please open your AOSB book and turn to the page of viewRootImplementation.java and check out the performance traversals method. It's quite a long method, so I'll have you highlight the most important logic here, which are perform measure, perform layout, and perform draw. So the view rendering process basically is made up of three major steps, measure, layout, and draw. And measure is what we are going to be looking at today because it's related to the uh, problem we are trying to solve. The measure stage is also a top-down traversal of the view tree. For a view to be measured, two parameters are required, one of which is a view group .layout primes. It specifies how big the views wants to be for both uh, width and height. And it, it can be one of the below values match parent, uh, rep content, or exact number like 100 dp. I believe every Android developer uses it every day, so I won't explain them in detail in this talk. Uh, the other parameter is measure spec, which uh, the dimension specification pushed from the views parent. Usually, developers don't really ever need to touch it when implementing UI. 
but I, I would like to talk about it briefly here. A major spec can be in one of three modes unspecified. This is used by a parent to determine the desired dimension of a child view. For example, a linear layout may pass a width of 200, exactly 200, or unspecified height to its child to find out uh, how tall the child view wants to be uh, given a width of 200 pixels. And exactly, which means that the child must use this exact size and guarantee all of its descendants will fit within this size. And at last means uh, the parents will expose uh, maximum size on the child. The child must guarantee that itself and all of its descendants will fit within this size. So the view group class determines the measure spec and pass it to its children. Then the child view will make use of this spec in its uh, measure method to finally determine the dimensions of the view. So let's go back to our problem and figure out how a nested scroll view requests its children to render themselves. Uh, starting from the measure child method in the nested scroll view class, you can see that the unspecified mode of measure spec is used and passed to the child recycler view for its measurement purpose. And then of course, the next step is the uh, unmeasure method of the recycler view class. Due to length constraint, only the code relevant to our problem is shown on this slide. So the recycler view will check the measure spec mode passed from its parent. If it's exactly, then it will skip the measure process. However, because the measure spec is unspecified in this case, this highlighted method will be called as a following step. What this method is going to do is it steps through all of the child views in the recycle view in order to determine its bonds. Afterwards, it calls set measure dimension by passing the rectangle and the dimension uh, measure specs. In this method, you will notice we also add the possible paddings to this rectangle bonds and finally make the recycle view confined to the bonds of the rectangle by calling the choose size method. So the choose size method actually determines the measured dimension at the width and height of the recycle view, right? So what it does, it checks the measure spec again. And because the measure spec is unspecified, this case uh, block will be executed. Here desired represents the rectangle bounds I mentioned on the last slide and the, main, the minimum dimension that the recycle view should be in our case, desired is larger than mean, so the previously calculated rectangle bounds will be returned as a result. So what's wrong with our initial solution? Based on the previous discussion, we know that the recycle view's height would be the total height of all child views, including any top bottom paddings. In other words, the recycle view's height is not gonna be restricted. And you can think of like all list view items are considered as on screen and are rendered once at the beginning. Every emoji tab could have more than 200 emojis. So we saw the rendering lag issue in the earlier video. Before jumping to the solution part, let me show you a table about the combination of the two parameters for the measure process. And let's focus on the unspecified column. If an exact number is provided as a height layout primes, such as 200 dp, the recycle view's height will be 200 dp. However, if wrap content or match parent is used instead, the recycle view's height will be unspecified and unrestricted. As a consequence, when the recycle view contains a large amount of items, all the items will be rendered at once, whether or not it's on screen, and we won't get the benefit of recycling. So in order to solve our problem, the quickest and easiest solution is to use exact value at the height of the recycle view. Unfortunately, we don't know the value in advance because each emoji type contains a different number of emojis. So we have to give up our initial solution to not wrap a recycle view inside a nested scroll view and use our own customized adapter to leverage a single recycle view, which supports multiple view types. And finally, we managed to solve the rendering issue earlier and achieve the smooth scrolling effect on the keyboard as shown in the video. To summarize, in this talk, we discussed when a recycle view is put inside a nested scroll view, how it will be uh, measured. And when rep content and match parent are used to specify the height of the recycle view, it would cause a rendering and a memory issue because all list view items are rendered regardless of their visibility. As a simple solution, if you know the size of the recycle view already, it's okay to wrap a recycle view with a nested scroll view. 
by using exact dimension for the recyclable. However, to make your code more flexible and maintainable in the future, I strongly recommend not to put a re recyclable inside a nested scrubby and use a single recyclable to realize your UI component. Uh, that's about it for my time. Next, I'll hand over to my colleague Johnny to talk about the iOS side. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yang, for sharing us what we've done to optimize the recycle fuel performance on Android. And this is Johnny from iFoca client team. Today, I will introduce you how to create a smooth spend and collapse animation on iOS. Earlier this year, we introduced a new feature, category tab, in the Line Messenger. We categorize sticker by text, and finding your favorite sticker becomes much more easier than ever before. When we are using the category tab, you might become curious about how can we implement the category result page with such smooth extent and class animation. There are several challenges we face in during implementing this feature. First, keyboard is not for screen height. So the, but the expand, expanding animation will go beyond the keyboard and area. Second, during the animation, we don't want to change keyboard height because if you do that, the input bar will go up and it's totally not what we want. So to implement the first idea might be calculate the layout frame by frame. But this becomes quite complicated, and the calculation for this becomes very robust. For an interactive animation, the most important thing is we should be able to control the timing of the animation. To achieve this, UI Property Animator is a very good choice. UI Property Animator was introduced in iOS 10, a class that animates changes to views and allows the dynamic modification of those animations. By modifying the fraction complete property of UI Property Animator, we can pause the animation at any point and can continue to go forward or backward as we want. But using UI Property Animator alone cannot fulfill our requirement. First, after expand the overlay, child view is bigger than the parent view. In order to respond to user touch event on the child view, you need to handle heat test manually throughout the view hierarchy. Second, the dummy view background has, uh, does not re really belong to the presented or the presenting view controller. There is not good place to handle this background dim logic if you're using the property animator. So how can we resolve these issues? Then we comes up another idea. Can we present a view controller here? You might feel surprised, but the presenting view controller indeed works on keyboard. Keyboard is just a different window. And the power of UI view controller transition delegate, we can still use UI property animator to handle the animation. Because the presented view controller is a layer above the whole keyboard, manually handling touch event is not needed anymore in this case. And with the help of UI presentation controller, handling background dimming and device rotation is a very easy thing. So here is the implementation detail. First, in view controller, we need to define two state, expanded and collapsed and define how the view should be layouted in a config UI method. Then in view controller appears and disappear method, we use transition coordinator to make our transition animatable. If you are not familiar with transition coordinator, this is the object that UI kit will automatically create for us during the view controller transition process. You can use transition coordinator to bind custom animations with transition animation, and your custom animation will sync with the transition animation. That means if the transition is an interactive rock one, you can, your extra animation will also become interactive for free. Let's have a look at what our keyboard looks like after we define two state of the category detail view. We close up the handle, the expanded view shows up, and we drag down the view. Oh, there is an interactive dismiss here. So it looks pretty nice. And we have a good interactive dismiss animation without writing a single line of code for it. So maybe we are almost finished now. Well, it's a little disappointing, but the answer is no. 
We got this effect just because the new IL-13 view controller presenting style is automatically applied. If we run the same code on the IL-12, this is what we want. Uh, get the compare side to side. The left side is the iOS 12 device and the right side is iOS 13. So we pull up and you, know, you see the left side becomes a full screen view. So this is not the effect we want. Besides that, there is still something that's not as expected. First, there is only one interactive dismiss, but we want both present and dismiss to be interactive. Second, the initial frame of presentation is not correct. Maybe you didn't notice that, so let's make the animation slower and we can have a look again. So we pull up the handle again. As you see, the new view controller comes up from the bottom of the screen, but we want it to begin from the same size as the collapsed panel. To resolve this, we need UI view controller transitioning delegate to help us. When we present a view controller, the presented view controller will ask UI view controller transition delegate for some helper class to further define the transition process. This helper class includes the animator, interactive animator, and present presentation controller. First, we create our presentation controller. Because we are not using the system provided transition style now, we need to manually define the final layout and handle the dimming background. In this case, we only need a top spacing to calculate the size and frame of the final view. And handling dimming view is not complicated at all. We add or delete dimming view at a correct time and apply animation to the dimming view. Note that here we use transition coordinator again to make the dimming view animation align with the view presentation transition. Next, animator objects for present and dismiss. In presentation controller, we only set the final frame of the presented view controller. Here we can fully define the presentation, including the initial frame, duration, timing function, and so on. In order to create our interactable animation, we have to use UI property animator. Third step, we need our interactive animator. This object drives the whole transition process. The easiest way to create an interactive animator is to subclass UI present driven interactive transition class and add a pen gesture recognizer to your subclass to interactively change the animation process. Let's check how it all looks out. Again, after adopt the UI view controller transitioning delegate. First, the interactive presentation. So it looks very smooth. And uh, let's try the interactive dismiss. OK, it's very perfect. And next, we score the question view a little bit down and try again. This time, we pull up, oh, something wrong. You notice that the content jumps between the presented and the presenting view controller. The beginning position is not synced between the two controller. So in order to make the whole transition smooth, we need to one more step. We need to add a delegate between two view controller and sync their content offset on start of the expanding and end of the collapsing. So here is the takeaway of this session. First, view controller presenting works on keyboard. If you need to do something similar, you can consider try this. Second, we can use transition coordinator to define appear and disappear animation beside the transition animation. Third, if you want to create a custom interactive transition, you need to implement UI view controller transitioning delegate. So that's all of this. Thank you very much.